The road to the 109th Great Cup for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The kick is up. The kick is good. Seth Small has done it. The Tiger Cats have won. Can be heard daily here on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. From the Tie Cats Audio Network, this is Tie Cats Today with Louis Butko. Yes, it is Tie Cats Today for a Monday, October the 31st, 2022. Ooh, spooky. Happy Halloween. Thanks for joining us here on the Tie Cats Audio Network for our playoff edition of the show. Yes, as we close the book on the regular season. I don't want to spend too much time talking about Saturday's win in Ottawa. I will say, I am thoroughly impressed with the way that the game went. And maybe thoroughly is not the word. I'm impressed. That's uh, that's it. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm, I think the Ticats played well. A lot of starters weren't in the lineup. You look at what they did on the ground. Uh, you know, Sean Thomas Erlington averaging more than eight yards per carry. Wes Hills averaging more than eight yards per carry. Dane was efficient in his limited action. 78%, 120 yards. Matt Schiltz was efficient. Uh, both guys were running the football well. Terry Godwin looked great. You know, is, he, is he making a case to, to you know, make the roster for the postseason? You can make the argument there. Seth Small was solid, finishing the year as the most accurate field goal kicker in Hamilton Tiger Cats franchise history. How about that? That is just incredible. I've seen a lot of great kickers come through here. I've seen Justin Medlock kick game-winning kicks. Of course, Paul is Baldison, one of the best to ever do it in the black and gold. And uh, Seth Small, the 22-year-old from Caddy, Texas, uh, the Ticats' most accurate kicker and uh, a great dude as well. And I uh, had a great time catching up with him. Uh, last week, he was 3-for-3. Three three. Uh, Ticats finished the year 8-10. and 10, And they're going to the postseason. And that's all that matters. Reset the boards. Uh, nothing else matters. You know, I've seen some people think like, oh, the Ticats 8-10 if they make the Grey Cup. It uh, won't be worth it because they're 8-10. and 10. I don't think they're thinking that way. Uh, they're eight and ten. It's a brand new season. The Montreal Alouettes are nine and nine. Uh, Toronto Argonauts eleven and seven. Didn't really blow anybody out of the water. And yeah, the Winnipeg Bombers, Blue Bombers, were fifteen and three. I will preface this with the Ticats were fifteen and three a few years ago, and uh, we all remember how that turned out. And uh, we don't talk about the Great Cups on this show. The past Great Cups, we will talk about the future Great Cups, and of course that game being played on November twentieth. In Regina, Saskatchewan, as you heard off the top, the road to Regina starts Sunday against the Alouettes in Montreal. Pre-game coverage here on the Ticats Audio Network starts at 12. We'll let, maybe have some special pre-pre-game content. Uh, I, I'm putting our uh, program director on the spot there on that one. Who knows? Uh, but we'll keep our ears open for that. And, of course, lots going on here on the Ticats Audio Network all week, including... Brand new episodes of the CFL this week. Brand new episodes of the Coach O Show. More Alley and Hitch. Tie Cats this week. Tiger Cats game day. Uh, so you're going to, want to be listening to the Tie Cats Audio Network. You're going to want to be subscribed uh, so you never miss an episode of this show or any of the other great shows. Uh, no practice today with the game on Sunday. Uh, day one set for Wednesday. So a couple of days without practice, uh, which is a good thing for the bodies. Uh, we will have to wait a couple of days to get to talk to the guys ahead of Sunday's game. But for more, very pleased now to be joined by the men who will be on the call. RJ Broadhead, Luke Tasker, the play-by-play team here on the Ticats Audio Network. Thanks for doing this, boys. Uh, I want to start with you, uh, Luke. Put it uh, into the perspective of a player. How does your mind reset at the end of the regular season? Does it? Because uh, you're obviously riding the momentum of the 5-1. and one, But how do you approach... Week one of the postseason, is it just a continuation or how, how does a player look at it? Yeah, I mean, I just remember as a player, when you get to this point, it just feels like so long ago when you came to training camp at McMaster, everything has been, everything has been, you've got, you've gone through the ups and downs of injuries, ups and downs of wins and losses, stretches of really good play by the team and by yourself. Um, it, it's really an excitement that starts building. I mean, this is, it's the most fun time of year to play. Um, the uh, it's a, it's the reward for all the work that you've done just by being here. 
and hope and hopefully, although injuries can can have an effect on this, but hopefully you're feeling like you're playing the best football that you that you have all season. Practice doesn't wear on you at this point in the year. You know, it's just a, it flies by, you know, it's just it's almost kind of it's almost done anyways kind of thing. You have a chance to be great. Um there's just nothing like it as a player. It's the most exciting and most rewarding uh, t- uh, days of the whole season. And RJ, and thank to- goodness a lot changes, Louie. Oh yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> losing the first four games compared to winning the final four games, it's uh, it's a big change for the Tiger cats. And I think they are playing their best football right now. Yeah. And let's go back to Friday. I mean, we'll get to Sunday's game, but I want to go back to Friday because I was, I was thoroughly impressed with the amount of starters that were left behind, the the obvious game plan. The Ticats still looked like the much better football team. I was encouraged by what I saw from Dane Evans and his limited action. Matthew Schiltz looked good. And there were a lot of receivers that, that stepped up. That That's good to know if you need them. What impressed you the most about uh, that game in, in, in Ottawa, uh, RJ? I think the most important thing, Louis, was – they kept the momentum going. The game didn't mean anything in the standings. If they lost, no big deal. But there's a difference. Going into the playoffs as the hottest team in the CFL, four-game winning streak, 5-1 and one in the final third of the season, rather than going in off of a loss. I, I really am happy the way things worked out for the Tiger Cats. Finally got a game that didn't have huge importance. And... I'm interested to see what the depth chart is going to look like on Sunday for the East semifinal. Now, if that game meant something, Tim White would have played. And Terry Godwin probably would not have. But Mm -hmm. Godwin had a good game, led the Tiger Cats in receiving. And I would not be surprised to see him as a starting receiver on Sunday against Montreal. So a game like that, if he had a fantastic practice, he's not going to get into the starting lineup. But he had a really good game. Three uh, second down receptions as well. So clutch catches. Uh, I I think a game like that really helped somebody like Terry Godwin. So I'm excited to see who's going to be the the receiving core. But it was also good for Matt Schiltz because he hasn't played a ton because of the injury. Missed a couple of months. Came in late in the other Ottawa game and then started this game and then came in again uh, in relief. So he got some experience in in both of those situations, but he needed to to get into a game. So I would say those are the two, the two big um, pluses for the Tiger Cats in that game and the victory. And Luke, when, if you are playing that game, I have to think if you're somebody who who likely knows they're going to be in the lineup, uh, uh, come, come playoff time, your, your goal is A, to win the game, but it is to stay healthy. How do you approach a, a game like that as a player where you, you, you want to stay healthy, you want to stay in top shape, but you do want that momentum or you do want to impress the coaches to show off what you got? Yeah. Uh, if you know you're one of the guys who's going to be in the playoff lineup, you just play smart. You play within yourself. You know, there's there is there is an athletic aspect to being injury free as well. Of course, there's uncontrollables. You know, sometimes you just get hit in a way that you just can't expect. But as far as, you know, those classic soft tissue things that you just get from playing sports, uh, you, you just need to c- control yourself. I would think that they're fairly happy with how that game went as far as, you know, injury wise and and the ability to just kind of move your your expected lineup into the playoffs. Um, but of course, you it, it, there, another another way to to get hurt in 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 sports is is being really careful is you know not not playing fully but not playing aggressively you know and you're sort of off rhythm with the rest of the people on the field and so now I saw guys like Simone Lawrence uh, Tunde Adelike while he was in there um, uh, Stephen Dunbar Jr. all those guys you know you know playing you know just good solid football and you kind of have to do that and. Louis, to your previous question is just as what what was most maybe impressive about that game is just I, I thought the defense was just wildly impressive. I mean, there was times during that game where they were uh, absolutely dominant, and uh, if if that if that can if they can continue to do that as they have to go on this three game you know playoff uh, road road stretch here, man, it's just it just does such a good such good for the whole team, including the offense, giving them a chance repeated chances to find rhythm uh, when the defense just doesn't stay on the field. And RJ and Luke, you've heard it too all season long. And and I've said it, it's, it's the waiting room for a reason. It's not the practice roster, but 
really, I mean, give credit to the guys upstairs, give credit to Coach O, because it seems like no matter, give credit to the system that's there, because no matter who they put in, whether it's on that D line, whether it's Kyle Wilson taking over as middle linebacker, uh, you know, in this second, really, it's been really impressive that plug and play that the Tie Cats have been able to establish. And to that point, guys do have to buy into a certain system of, hey, it might not be my moment, but my moment's going to come. Yeah, and it has. The opportunity's been there. And Coach O, we all know he calls it the waiting room. It's and it it he calls it that for a reason. So many guys who are on the practice roster got opportunities, and we we saw quite a few in that Ottawa game. I, I was talking to Andy before the game uh last week on, on Saturday, and you know, you could you, a bye week. Again, you can have a big practice and just be the best guy in practice, but that's not going to get you into the lineup or maybe not even on the the postseason active roster. But a big game like that, that a regular season game, you can really make a name for yourself. So Luke mentioned it. The defense stepped up. It was an all-rookie defensive line. Yeah, there weren't a ton of sacks, but uh, some of those guys are going to be needed in the postseason, no question about it. Kyle Wilson's proven he can be a starter. It's just really tough to crack into the the Tiger Cats starting linebacking core and the secondary. I I, I love the Tiger Cats secondary. I I think it's the whole defense is is fantastic. They rested most of the defensive line. I think that'll be again a big key. Hopefully the offense is rolling and clicking, but we've seen so many times this season where the defense keeps the game close or creates a turnover and gives that offense time to to get things together. So we'll see. Maybe everything happens perfectly in, in Montreal on Sunday, but we know the defense has, has been the backbone for sure. I, I don't think anyone's going to disagree with you on that, RJ. But Luke, that being said, the offense has really turned it on as of late in terms of just consistency, moving the ball in different ways, getting first downs, sustained drives when they need them. We've seen a number of fourth quarter drives that, that go beyond three, four or five minutes that work the ball down the field that kill the clock. What's been clicking offensively that you've seen these last few weeks that, you know, if I'm the Montreal Alouettes, if I'm the Toronto Argonauts, I'm thinking, okay, these aren't the same tie cats we saw a few weeks ago. Yeah. And, um, I think I think it goes right back to the root of it, which is ball security. Um, you know, in sort of a sort of a uh, uh, maybe a boring uh, answer, but but they've just done a better job of it. Early in the, they went zero and four to start the season, just turning the ball over. I mean, like <laughs> like it was a slick. Like they were handing ball. out I mean, candy and trick or treating. Yeah, and now they've just <laughs> done a better job of of doing that, protecting it. The three games against Montreal. Um, never never uh horrible turnover ratios in those games but the last game they were negative too and they and they lost that one um uh, by the longest spread and so uh, they've got to they've got to maintain their ability uh to to do that um i think that the other biggest change in this offense has been the increased uh, uh run game uh, uh effectiveness and Wes Hills, Sean Thomas Erlington both both having a big part of that and i think we'll see both of them continue into the playoffs you know, I think there's, I think, I think the tie cat offense is still missing um, a, a really dynamic passing attack that, that, that we've, you know, become uh, really, really comfortable with uh, kind of over the last decade. I mean, this has been a passing football team for a long time. Um, and I think at times they've shown, they've shown greatness there this year. Um, and specifically you think of Dane Evans performance in the Winnipeg game at Tim Hortons field. Uh, but I think there's also been a number of games where, it, 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 they've they've had some completions they've strung some success together uh but but have kind of been lacking that big play offensively at times uh, excuse me in the passing game at times yeah. um if they can kind of get those two things to work at the same time that 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 newfound run game ability and some of that classic uh Tommy Condell and Dane Evans uh you know aerial attack you know that's going to be what 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 will be give them a, a chance to win the Grey Cup and RJ, to that point, I mean, the run game, uh, a lot of that, has, the success of the run game has come with the success of the offensive line. And, you know, we, we got to, you know, we'll wait and see what's up with Tyrone Riley. Wasn't great to see him you know, be helped off the field in that game. But uh, that consistency at the offensive line has been so crucial to this team's success. And a bunch of guys who probably didn't think they'd be playing since half of them were playing elsewhere 
Um, but uh, that, that's been a real strength in keeping the quarterback upright. What have you seen from that group specifically? Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right, Louis. That's where the success has originated. And and I started talking to, to Luke about it and talked about it in the post game. I'm on the David Beard bandwagon for <laughs> most outstanding player number two, run up. <laughs> Since he's been with the Tiger Cats, since he's been starting, the team is 5-1. and one. And those guys, they don't really get praise if everything goes well. Just you expect, hey, the running back was great. Oh, the quarterback completed all these passes. But they have nobody talks about the time that they have. And, and you never see a, a bad snap from, from David Beard. I just think that was the key piece to that offensive line because it's really turned everything around. It's shown in the record. And I just want to touch on one thing Luke mentioned with the turnovers. That game against Ottawa, again, didn't mean anything in the standings, but it was just the second time all season the Tiger Cats did not turn the ball over. The other game was against Winnipeg. Five times they've won the turnover battle this season. So had fewer turnovers than their opposition. They won all five of those games. So it it is important, but again, I'm I'm on the, the David Beard bandwagon. I think since he's arrived, things have really changed for this Tiger Cats offense. And Luke, to that point, I mean, the, the consistency of the center, you talked about the great quarterback play of the last 10 years. A lot of that has come with consistency at center. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether it was Mike Filer, who, was, who owned that spot, and then before him, Marwan Hage. I mean, there there is something to be said about chemistry between a offensive lineman, a center, and this quarterback, and the trickle down effect to the receivers and the run game. Absolutely, and so when you had a young guy along like Fontana go down for the year, it, I mean, Coach O referenced this in the post game. Like it wasn't, it wasn't. There's not always just a veteran center available, and for them to have gone out, found you know, you know, produced that that transaction, and then pulled the trigger on it and got a guy like David Beard. That, that was a turning point in the year. That was a crucial move. And, and yes, he has to come in and step into a new team, but that's a guy who knows how to play CFL center. And clearly it, it changed the dynamic of, of, uh, of the progress of that group who is already dealing with the loss of Chris Van Zyl to injury this year. So um, I'm with, I'm with you, RJ there. I mean, David Beard and the run game uh, and their amazing ability they turned they entirely turned around their ability to protect the quarterback and and limit quarterback sacks all of those are hand in hand and david beard was sort of uh crucial with that along with again you kind of can't really mention this offensive line without talking about brandon revenberg as well and what he's what he is to that unit yeah, yeah. second uh straight year of a unanimous decision as the uh, team's most outstanding offensive lineman and uh the consistency that he brings there, the leadership he brings past 100 games, stays healthy, goes out there, uh, does his job. RJ, uh, we talked about the defense. Uh, I mean, special teams, though. Uh, Seth mm -hmm. Small, the team's nominee for most outstanding uh, rookie, most outstanding special teams player. I think, he's good, I think he's got a good shot at coming out of at least the East Division for the the league award just by, based on what he's done. Uh, he, re he really has – Coach has talked about this. He talked about it last week. Um, it's really, he, he's been essential to the success of this franchise or this team this season. He has. And we all remember he didn't start the season as the Tiger Cats kicker. He hung around, he stayed sharp and Coach O did reference him as the best kicker in the CFL. Um, and there's a great argument for it. Finished as the highest field goal percentage in Hamilton Tiger Cats history. He's on a streak of eight straight field goals. Uh, coming in, the, the last one he's missed, it was a 53-yarder. And, and Luca, I think you were Some on the postgame show and asked him about it. And he called it about he called it a breakfast ball, uh, like in golf. And <laughs> yeah. you, you kind of get one of those, not that you want one of those, but he's got a bit of a sense of humor and, and easily forgot about it uh, and was able to kick five straight after that. So I'm, I'm a huge Seth Small fan. He's been big. I know you like that one, Luke. <laughs> You're always but, good for the uh, yeah. classic play-by-play uh, -play, uh, catchphrase. I love it. <laughs> well, you know, and it's really made the, the coaching staff's decisions easy. And that's what you want going into the playoffs. If you're not sure if your field goal kicker is going to make the kick, 
maybe you are a little riskier with some calls and might leave some points on the board if it doesn't work out, if you if you gamble and it, it doesn't work. But with Seth Small, you know, you're basically depending on the wind, but we know he can make 58 yarders. So we'll say we'll say 60 yards in. You'd have to have a lot of confidence in, in Seth Small making a field goal. Yeah, Steve Milton has been talking about this a lot the last little bit, especially since, you know, uh, we've seen the best out of Seth uh, the last few games. Uh, it's nice to have those three points in your pocket, Luke. And as uh, someone who was part of that team, you understand that, you know, when I talk to Seth about his success this year, what does he talk about? He talks about Gordon White and he talks about Matthew Schiltz right away. You've been a holder. You know the the key to that. That, that tandem of those three guys having that success, I mean – it, it does take being on the same page constantly. And, and it, it does go to the bigger picture of when everybody was talking on the outside about, does this team have enough? Who's got to go? What's the big trade that's going to be made? There's a lot of outside noise. Coach O doesn't let that outside noise even sneak through the bottom crack of the door of the locker room. No, not at all. <clears throat> um, he is a, like we've all been told, Louis, you, you included, he's, he is a control what you can control guy and don't care about the rest. You know, really, really don't care about it in a in an authentic way. Um, uh, do the best with what you've got. To your point about Seth Small and that unit, um, it is a, a great operation. And Seth Small is now the the best percentage in Tycat history. That was my record with Justin Medlock in 2015. That was 90 <laughs> or 89% or whatever, which I didn't know until Seth small was about to break it, but still the, uh, it is, it's awesome. And it's good for Matt Schultz and, and Gordon white as well. I mean, those guys are important in that, in that percentage, um, in just the precise, you know, the precise and unique part of the game that, 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 uh, snap hold and kick is, um, yeah. And now, you know, entering the playoffs, who knows how what 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 kind of field goal you know that operation is going to get called on with weather and wind and of course distance and and timing in the game and so uh it could be it could be that unit that that uh, wins a playoff game yeah uh rj let's talk about the game on sunday um i mean this tie cats team and a lot of the guys on this team have played a lot of playoff games right Uh, they've gone to back-to-back great cups they haven't won but where do you think that leadership's going to showcase itself and how, how should it showcase itself when it comes to being a lower seated team going on the road, not a place they're used to doing, especially in the East semifinal. Uh, how do you feel like uh, that, that leadership's going to translate onto the on-field results? Yeah, I think it's going to be excellent for on-field results. They believe the Tiger cats believe we talked to Simone Lawrence after the game and, and, he, he knew their record in the final six games. He knows they're going in as the hottest team. Do you want the best record in the division, or do you want to be the best team going into the playoffs? It, it's interesting. The bye would be fantastic, but nobody's hotter than the Tiger Cats right now. So, you know, Montreal, probably when Hamilton got that spot, got that third spot in the East Division, they... They probably weren't overly excited. They were probably looking and thinking, you know, Riders would maybe be a better matchup, see what Ottawa can do in those final two games. But I don't think anyone's excited to play the Tiger Cats. And the three games against Montreal, all close games, all one-score games. Montreal only finished two points ahead of the Tiger Cats in the standings. You go to that first game. Remember that game? Hamilton won by seven, but Trevor Harris had the Owls on the move. He was hit by Stavros Katsantonis, the injury spotter, gets player of the game for the Tiger Cats, pulls Harris out on the very last play. Dominic Davis, who had thrown two passes at that point, gets picked. So who knows what would have happened if Trevor Harris stayed in that game. The next game was Matt Schiltz at quarterback against Montreal. He had that big game with Tim White. They had terrific chemistry. Seth Small hits a long field goal. And last play of the game, David Cote hits a 48-yarder. 48-yarder is not a gimme. And Montreal wins by a point. And then the last game, Montreal won by seven. Hamilton was moving the ball late. And Keandre Smith, he tried to make a little too much happen as it turned out, wound up fumbling the ball on the Montreal 34. So those three games all could have gone either way. Obviously, Montreal won two of them, but they were all one-score games. So I think this is just going to be a... Just a fantastic East final, but 
Tiger Cats, they'll be going into Montreal thinking they're the favorite team. And I, I've talked to a few other people and I haven't heard many picking Montreal. So we'll see what happens on the field. But the Tiger Cats have a lot of love out there. Luke, it goes back to the outside noise. I mean, you guys aren't listening to this saying, well, RJ thinks we're the favorite now. So uh, we're going to go in there <laughs> acting all confident. There, cause, But there is something to be said about confidence and cockiness, right? Especially come playoff time, especially the way that this team is playing. I'm not saying I, I don't think coach knows how to you know, control those two things. But as a player, how do you balance this confidence of like, yeah, we're playing great football. Uh, is it just something about comes with being a pro that like, you know, the layman wouldn't be able to understand. Cause it, for me, there would be that scale of, okay, I got to be confident cause I know I can do this, but also like, I don't want to run my mouth. I don't want to sound like an idiot. Yeah. I mean, it's just that they're not, there's no way to hide or to, you know, kid yourself that it's easy to go to Montreal and win a playoff game, you know? And, and yes, you know, to that, to that sort of, um, other end of that spectrum, you're talking about Louis, you are, you know, five and one, you're ending your season. I mean, you've had an impressive stretch of games, but nobody's thinking that like Mont- that you can just go into Montreal and easily win a playoff game. I mean, it's going to be it there. there it's going to be a hard fought battle, no matter uh, no matter what way it goes. Um, I I just think the you know um, appearance of the tie cats to the rest of the league, you know the 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 sort of uh, you know aura around them is their defense, and so and it is going to be teams are not just going to be able to hang thirty on the tie cats, no problem. You know what I mean? I mean you're going to have to grind your way uh, to your to get points. Y- you get you get a pretty much a week off for that starting front four after, who really didn't play in the Ottawa game. Uh, this is, it's going to be a vicious yeah. tie cat defense. And so, yes, Montreal is going to be difficult to play in. I think you've got a, a, a generally a healthy Hamilton offense compared to what, you know, at, at, at any given time throughout the season. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm favoring the tie cats as objectively as I can be. I think that they're ready to go win this playoff game. I never had a playoff game in Toronto. Strangely enough, as I think back, I never had to play in the postseason in Toronto. Um, uh, excuse me, Montreal, uh, Montreal. but that's yeah. where they're going this weekend. Um, it is just a classic difficult place to win a game. Um, you know, we'll see. I think that we're going to have, a uh, a, a, a just an, a classic and an excellent CFL playoff game. I, I really, I really do think so. Um, the tie cats just having everything come together at the right moment at the right time. Um, and yet having to go to on the road, I think we're going to see a great one. Yeah, and final, final thoughts here, RJ. I mean, to, to talking about those week off, talking about preparing for Montreal. I mean, it sounds like Stan Back's going to be back for this game, right? And is going to kind of be running through them. Micah Johnson having a game off. Ted Laurent being able to stay off his feet for a lot of that game in Ottawa. I mean, that that should be scary. Uh, Joe Von Santos Knox has hit more but has hit more bodies uh, than all but five tie cats in team history this season. Uh, it, you can't underestimate what, uh, you know, for for guys like us, what a week off means uh, for guys like them who take these abuse on their body. Uh, you should be pretty yeah. excited about what the Ticats can do. Yeah, well, you think about that defensive line, Malik Carney, Julian Hauser, Micah Johnson. I told Luke a couple of times, I was so excited going into the final game. They all had seven sacks. Who was going to get the sacks title? None of them played. So, <laughs> you know, it, and those guys have contact on every play. So to get a, yeah. a week off is is really, really important for them. Going into the playoffs, it, it's it's really great how the schedule worked out for the Tiger Cats. Uh, William Stanback will play. They've got Jeshwin Antwi and Walter Fletcher who will play. They may do some two back sets in that game, but I, I think I think the big key is we've seen it over and over against when the Tiger Cats play Montreal, Trevor Harris to Eugene Lewis. And it always seems to be in the second half. Or Eugene Twitter. Lewis makes stuff happen. So yeah, they they have to find a way to stop that if they're gonna win the football game. The the run defense, I'm confident in. Um, William Stanback hasn't played a lot. Maybe he's fresh. Maybe they try to go to him. But Calgary was the only team that I've seen the the run defense look average by the Tiger Cats all season long. They gave up some some big gains, but not consistently. Like Calgary was was moving the ball. So I'm I'm looking at Eugene Lewis being stopped as the the huge key for the Tiger Cats. But it, it it's going to be a a great game. I can't wait and. 
I don't know. I, I just I've said it since early in the year when things weren't going right. And if something could go wrong, it did go wrong for the Tiger Cats. But how it's turned around and how it's worked out just in the nick of time, it just have the gut feeling it's going to be one of those those great sports stories where you lose your first four games. People are worried. People are panicking. But the team never panicked. So we'll see how it all plays out. But I, I think something great is brewing here. Well, RJ, uh, you had the gut feeling that there would be no West crossover when everybody and their uh, their little brother was <laughs> saying so. So uh, that's a shout out to little David Butko, by the way. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was, was going to bring it up. To shout out, sh- yeah, you picked that up. Uh, shout out, David, uh, who, who both you guys get to deal with today because RJ, uh, you are a guest on CFL this week. Uh, Luke, you got uh, the Coach O Show this week. And, of course, uh, Ty Cats this week will be available on Saturday. Uh, you guys are very busy men. Uh, you just called the game on Saturday. You're joining me today. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I uh, wouldn't have wanted to start my uh, my week, my playoff week, playoff edition of Ty Cats today with anyone else but you. So thank you, guys. Thanks, oh, Awesome. Thanks, Louie. My thanks to RJ Broadhead and Luke Tasker for joining me today. And my thanks to you as well, because guess what? We could not do the show without your support. So we very much appreciate it today as we do every day as we kick off the playoff edition playoffs of Tie Cats today. And uh, we are back tomorrow. Same time, same place. And as mentioned, you can check out RJ on a brand new episode of the CFL this week. Available now alongside Bubba O'Neill and, and Dan Ralph. Uh, that's available right now on the Tiger Cats Audio Network, so go check it out. Uh, you can also catch a Luke Tasker on a brand new episode of the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker, uh, available later this week on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. That'll do it for us. As I mentioned, back same time, same place, right here tomorrow on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Until then, I'm Louis Butko. Hope you have a great day. Bye. Regina Grey Cup is weeks away. <laughs> Get your daily update here. You're listening to the Tie Cats Audio Network.